According to international surveys, Singapore has the highest car prices on the planet. This is your standard Toyota Corolla Altis, one of the most popular cars in Singapore. The basic cost of this car here is about 124,000 Singapore dollars. The thing is this, the car itself just costs about 19,000 Singapore dollars. And then there's a host of other taxes, including the goods and services tax, a registration fee, an additional registration fee or ARF, a tax imposed when you register your car. As you can see, the rest of the cost actually goes to the COE, or Certificate of Entitlement. Essentially, a piece of paper that allows you to own and drive your car for 10 years. It's this COE that has been surging in recent months. Premiums have risen all across the board. Have crossed the $90,000 mark, hitting a nine-year high. A Certificate of Entitlement premiums for vehicles have hit their highest ever. So in this episode, I'm on the road to find out just what's behind these sky-high prices and just how fair is our COE system? And is there anything we can do about it? But first, let's find out if people even know how the COE is derived. Do you know how we get our COE prices? Uh, bidding. Bidding, okay. Yeah. What else? Uh, People like agents and workshops that they bid on stuff like that. Okay. You don't really know like how they actually work. What about you guys? How do we get that price at the end of every month? Yeah, I'm not sure. Not sure? Yeah. It's like shares, right? Something like shares. Do you know the yeah. calculations, what they do and how they decide whether it's like 50k or 100k? How they come up with that number? Uh, this one, technically, i don't not sure about that. Maybe the cost from the globally, the supply and also our locally, maybe the traffic or the tax petrol. Do you know, how do we get our COE prices? All to tender law? Absolutely, the calculations, no. Yeah. I mean, I know it's a bidding, la. it's a bidding process, but who's bidding, I don't know. It seems that most people aren't exactly sure how we derive at our COE prices. Which is why I think it's best I check in with a professional. Dr. Clive Chu studied the COE system as part of his research in strategic management. Help me understand how we come up with our COE prices each time. The number of COEs are determined by LTA. Okay. So <clears throat> assuming that there are, say, five COE for the month, assuming that somebody bid it for $10,000, okay, another person could actually bid for $20,000. So if there are five COEs, of course, both of them will get the COE, right? Right. So if you keep going on this way, right, 40,000 and say 50,000. Now, if you have five COEs, uh -huh. all of them will get it. Now, let's say there are only four COEs available for this period. Yep. Right. Then how do we choose who gets it? Okay. So because we have four, which means that they have to take the top four, right? right? So that will end up here. So which means that this fella right. will lose a bid. Okay. Bidders submit the maximum amount they are willing to pay. The final COE price is the highest unsuccessful bid for that exercise plus one dollar. Everyone pays that amount. In this case, 10,001 Singapore dollars. So for example, the latest exercise that we have it for the cat B is like one one three thousand. Yeah. It could possibly mean that some COEs could be bidded at 130, 140. Because if 113 is the lowest, it means everybody else is higher, right? Yes. Exactly. Wow. Okay. So actually the incentive to bid higher is there because I will get a refund anyway. But if everybody keeps doing that, it means that the price will go up, right? Right. And then that I guess. That's how we ended up with our over $100,000 yeah, COE, right? Absolutely, yes. The last time COE prices hovered around the $90,000 mark was in 2013, almost 10 years ago. At the time, experts had attributed it to the financial recovery, people were spending more money, that's why COE prices were higher. But now, 10 years on, I'm wondering what's causing this spike again? The Linky Car Belt, 
home to cars galore and the next pit stop of my journey. Here to help me out is Darren Wong, a motoring journalist with over 15 years of experience. So Darren, I have to ask you, yeah. why are COE prices so high now? There always is demand uh, for cars in Singapore, but recently because of an uh, influx of high net worth individuals, uh, especially we believe from China, that seems to have driven up the prices. Okay, so, so you're saying that people have the money to spend and they're kind of yeah. just throwing it at these Yeah, COEs. exactly. The demand from affluent car buyers has driven up prices, in particular for category B and E COEs. Beyond a hundred thousand dollars. There are five different COE categories. Category A for cars with an engine capacity of 1.6 litres and below. Category B are more powerful cars than those in Cat A. These are usually luxury or premium vehicles. Category C for commercial and goods vehicles. Category D for motorcycles. And Category E, otherwise known as the open category, which can be used for any vehicle except motorcycles. And how long can we expect to see such high prices? Right, so if I were you and I could stretch it out, you know, maybe three, four years, I think, yeah, wow. COE prices will come back down. There is another source of price pressure. It's probably easier for me to show you than tell you. So let's go for a ride, man. Okay, yeah. sure, okay, sure. This is a private hire car. Yeah. So in 2011, the number of private hire cars on the road in Singapore was about 14,000. And last year, it was more than 65,000, which is kind of a five times increase. So these guys, in a way, are also competing for the same pool of COEs. That's right. And, and if you're a business and you have a fleet, you can, you can do more than one bid. So at the end of the day, this adds to the demand on the pool of uh, yeah, COEs. That's right. These companies, in a way, can really, uh, I guess, outbid everybody else because, and they need the, the cars, right, for their business. I suppose, yeah. I mean, they have more financial latitude. Private hire cars are usually mass market ones. So that means private hire companies are pushing up prices in category A. And with more affluent buyers purchasing cars in other categories, we are seeing COE prices soar across the board. But as I'm about to find out, there is one more reason for the surge in COE rates. I'm investigating what's behind Singapore's sky-high car prices and I've been asked to meet my next expert here. Tesla? So Sabrina, why did you ask me to come and meet you here today? We've been all wondering about what's happening with COE prices right. and one of the factors we hear from the market is, you know, the way that Tesla prices its, its cars, basically COE is separate. In Singapore, most car dealers usually sell cars at a package rate, together with the COE. So dealers wouldn't bid as aggressively. A high COE price would mean that they would earn less from the package price, and in some cases, even have to top up the difference. But that's not the case with Tesla. Then naturally, if the customer are trying to secure the COE, there's no real incentive for them to you know, bid lower and that naturally puts an upward pressure, we feel, on the COE prices. So the customer actually needs to authorise Tesla to bid up to currently it's 8% above okay. the last round's cat B. Last year we heard it went as high as 15%, so basically that's like 10, 12,000 above the last round. Okay, so if it's 100,000, that means the next round it'll be 100,000 plus 8%. Yeah, that they can bid. 8% above, which is 108, for example. And right. if they say miss that round because prices go up too high, um, then the customer has to either cancel or I think what we hear is they, they have to re-sign another deal that authorizes a further 8% from the last bid. Oh. And then for the rest of us in the market, basically we have to reprice and estimate what the future COE would be okay. and then work that into our car prices, which then all obviously right. in general, all the, all the prices will just move up. Why doesn't Tesla do what everyone else is doing and package the COE price into the final car price? 
Uh, well, I'm not sure about their, their actual strategy, yeah. but my guess is that they want to split out the risk and, and not have any risk in terms of COE pricing, okay. uh, which is good on their side for them, but for the customer, then there's a lot of uncertainty. Talking Point reached out to Tesla, asking them about the strategy behind their pricing. But the company did not reply by the time this episode went to air. To be honest, I'm a little taken aback. When I think of Tesla, I always thought about a sustainable future. I certainly didn't think about an unsustainable COE price. I didn't realise that if I wanted a bid for a COE, I'd be up against all the you know, private hire companies, the fleet operators and even the super ultra-rich here in Singapore. Talk about bringing a knife to a gunfight. The COE system is also meant to limit car population on our roads. But why is it that we're still seeing this? And that's one reason transport expert Walter Zucera is carpooling with me. Right. So Walter, I mean, we're, we're sort of, you know, facing a bit of traffic here. Would you say the COE system doesn't work? How much worse do you think the traffic would be if we were somewhere else, like Kuala Lumpur or Jakarta or somewhere like that, where, you know, they don't really control the number of cars? So I think the COE system works, but, you know, it's hard for us in Singapore sometimes to see that it works. Singapore's a rich country, it's a rich city. And in a rich city, people buy lots of cars. If there wasn't a COE system, pretty much everybody in Singapore would own a car. And mm. if we all tried to use them at the same time, we'd be stuck in traffic. So right now, the COE system works such that, I guess the higher the bid, the better your chances of getting it, right? There's an auction. And in an auction, as we all know, uh, basically you, you, you give the item that is being auctioned to the person who's willing to pay the most. But as a result, does that make it um, fair? The biggest way in which it tries to um, give more people uh, access to cars is that it has different categories for COEs depending on the type of car you want to buy, right? So you've got category A and B. The idea behind that is it's an attempt to try to moderate the price of COEs for smaller cars uh, because those are more like mass market cars but it doesn't work perfectly. So what had happened in, I think, the late 2000s, early 2010s is that uh, more and more luxury cars were actually falling into the ma mass market category. And what had happened was, uh, you know, with, with technological developments, uh, there were more and more small engine luxury cars, which had high horsepower. The current category is based on engine size, and in the past, it correlated with the power it produces. But now, even a small engine can be extremely powerful. For example, this Audi A3 sedan, which has a horsepower of 110 and costs about $188,000, has a 1.4-litre petrol engine. While this Mercedes-Benz A180 hatchback, which costs about $220,000, has a 1.3-litre petrol engine. Both are luxury cars by any standard, but because of their engine capacity, are grouped with the mass market car category A. Then of course the question becomes, well, why don't you just go to using uh, the cost of the car to begin with? Or why don't right. they use the brand yeah. of the car or something like that, yeah, right? The more luxurious yeah, the yeah, car, yeah. the more expensive it would be. Yeah, and you know, I think they, they've thought about these issues, but I think the difficulty they had there was trying to decide on what would be a fair benchmark for the value or, or the price of the car. With COE prices for Category A, the category meant for mass market cars, hitting above $80,000 these days, does this mean that for some Singaporeans, owning a car is simply not possible? And you need a car, I guess, you know, she's young. I, I hear you have a dog too, is that? Yes. yes. <laughs> we are fostering a dog. Okay, okay. Yes. So it definitely, like, it would be really useful. Like, we restrict ourselves a lot in terms of like even our choice of childcare, our choices of schools and things yeah. like that. But one would say, you know, our public transport's pretty good. You can always just call a car. Well, yeah, um, but having a baby means you, you, you do need uh, a taxi per se with the license. Right. Yeah, grab I mean, the car actually, seats and things uh, like that. Baby okay. seat and things okay. like that. Uh, 
Um, there's a then you have to have a car that also allows dogs to go in, and then so it all just kind of adds up to being a very expensive, like one trip just for a family outing. Mm. Obviously, we manage with using public transport and taking taxis yeah. and things like that. But I think it comes down to quality time. Yeah. It's just the hours that get sucked up in kind of taking your, your public transport one, two hours. It means that our time can't be used for other things, like even just kind of sending baby to bed. Is this your system? Is it, is it a fair system? I mean, it, it's really hard to say, because I'm sure it's not only for young families who also um, would need cars in order to move around a bit more accessibly, but you know, other other people who have, you know, mobility issues and things like that. If there could be some sort of preferential system, that would be great. At least a cap on how many cars a household could have. Mm. It just don't, doesn't make sense that, yeah, uh, some, some can get three or four and then leave the rest of us dry, you know. Okay. Yeah. Mm, true. That's very big. Ah! Yeah. No car for you. Nope. Um. The different COE categories were meant to ensure that families like the Tans wouldn't have to compete for the same COE with supercar buyers. I want to shift gears and find out, can we make the system fairer? In July, authorities revised the method for deciding how many COEs were available for bidding. From 1st August, the supply of available COEs was calculated based on a rolling average of vehicle deregistrations over the last two quarters, rather than just one. For now, this has helped to moderate prices. But over the years, there have been other suggestions on how to tweak the COE system. I'm gathering some of the best and most popular suggestions and putting them under the scrutiny of these guys who collectively have more than 20 years of experience in the automotive industry. So hey guys, thanks for coming down. You know why you're here rather, to talk about the COE system, right? So today I want to pick your brains to help me figure out if there is possibly a better way we can do things. So for the first category, we're thinking maybe we should recategorize vehicles, meaning all the super luxury cars, you know, sports cars or really fancy cars, we can put into one separate category. Maybe all the private hire cars could also be in a separate category, the taxis as well. We have several categories such that I guess it's more evenly spread out. What do you think? Would that make sense? Yes, I think for sure. Because if you look at what currently they are doing now, taxi itself already have its own cat. They, are not, they don't belong into the COE building. So I think removing, say, the PHV, it will help the private vehicles in the cat A and cat B. So move the private hire out of the... Because now they bid like everybody else for the, the regular pool of COEs, right? Uh, personally, I just feel the main problem right now is the PHVs. Because before this PHV craze came about, it wasn't actually so bad. I think uh, the, right now EV is under the KB. I think EV should be separate on top of the, ah, the rest EV because goes. once EV come in, the seal is shoot out very high. There are also some EVs in Cat A as well. Yes, so, that's right. Yeah. Maybe we can categorize the COE by the OMV of the car. A more expensive car, getting a higher COE makes sense, right? But if I ask you to choose between feasible or not feasible, where do you think this should go? Feasible. feasible for me. Feasible? Very feasible. For now, I guess we can say it is feasible. We know there are families who need vehicles more if they have maybe special needs children, elderly folks, or do you think we should create a special COE just for certain groups that need it more? For low family income? Yeah? yeah. I, I don't think so. Yeah. This one can be easily gamed. Because I've seen people who, who are rich, you know, but they no, they, they, they're not working or whatever, they, don't, they, they never declare income. So I think probably it has to be something that is very, I would say, confirmed. Like, you know, you cannot mess around with it kind of thing. Like. For me, it's I mean, not creating another cat for a special group, but rather on a rebate basis. You know, just like you know, sometimes now we get helper, you know, yeah. there's levy. So I think we can add on another group of you know, people that's owning more than one car, like mm -hmm. adding levy or uh, charge, extra charges to them. This might help too. Reduce uh, people buying extra car. 
Where should we put this on the board? Feasible or not feasible? I think feasible lah. Feasible. feasible to a certain degree. It's a in between. In between? You think it should be in between? Okay. And for our last category is an idea which sounds a bit interesting. Pay as you bid. So essentially, everybody gets to bid, but if you bid $5,000, you bid $20,000, and you bid $50,000, and you all get it, you pay for what you bid it. Would that make people think harder about how much they bid? But from a car dealership point of view, how am I going to price my car? Because you wouldn't be selling COEs anymore. They would have to buy their own COE and then come to you, I have a COE, now can I choose a car? Actually, uh, this is the good idea. You know? Selling cars should be a stable environment. Right now, okay. it's unstable. Okay. It's, yeah, it's like a volcano. You don't know how much to expect you know, to, 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 to buy a car. I feel that if the quota is still low, because every time government gives a certain quota, it's always 30%, more than 30% oversubscribed. Right. So with this, I think it's still going to be the same effect. Due to the low quota also, I feel that the effect is lim limited okay. in terms of the price. La. But at least right, it won't cause like, unpredictable. You know, now the CO is a bit like the stock market. I, I feel that if you do about pay you bid, like some people bid it higher, some people bid it lower. Right. So the, the selling price might be fluctuating. This could be a a COE selling game also. So it's like I don't need a car, I sell to the dealer the car, but I'm, I can sell my COE to someone else. I mean, it could be, it could be that way. Okay, so pay as you bid. What do you think? Feasible or not feasible? Not feasible. Uh, I think not feasible. Not feasible. Yeah. yeah. Less doable. More complicated than the current, current uh, system. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Cannot. It looks like my experts could agree on one thing, creating more categories of COEs to equal the playing field. Authorities, though, have recently said additional COE categories would further fragment the market and be difficult to enforce, but that they will continue to monitor the market. So who knows, we may see further changes down the road. And I'm hoping that a tweak or two will eventually steer us towards a day where Singaporeans who really need a car will not be left in the dust.